Yeah, that was for sure the performance of the 49th Carifta Games, which ended in Kingston, Jamaica on Monday night. The World Under-20 record, the second ever produced at the Games, 18 years after Usain Bolt clocked 19.93 to set a new World Junior mark at the Bermuda edition in 2004. Overall, the Jamaicans dominated the event, topping the medal table for the 38th consecutive time. The last time the Jamaicans didn't top the medal table was in 1984 when they were beaten by the Bahamas. Jamaica, 45 gold, 29 silver, 18 bronze. The Bahamas, second, four gold, six silver, and seven bronze medals. The British Virgin Islands, their best of a finish at the Carifta Games as far as medals are concerned in the medal table. Four gold, two silver, and one bronze medal. Trinidad and Tobago were the second best as far as medal holds were concerned, 23 but two gold, 11 silver, and 10 bronze medals. Guyana, two, three, and two. The U.S. Virgin Islands, two, one, and zero. Barbados picked up one gold, four silver, and six bronze medals. French Guyana, one gold, two silver. Uh, Cayman Islands, one gold, one silver, two bronze. The Dominicans picked up a uh, gold and a uh, silver medal. So Leighton Levy and Hubert Lawrence were both part of Sportsmax's excellent coverage of the three-day meet, and uh, they join us now. Uh, to talk about um, a lot of what happened over the past three days. We will focus on uh, what uh, the outstanding Adesia Hodge did in the next segment. For this segment, though, we are focusing on what the Jamaicans did. They were dominant as they usually are. Um, Hubert Lawrence, great to have you in the studios here on the Sportsmax Zone. And we have Leighton Levy joining us on Zoom as well to recap the absolutely fabulous performances that we saw at the Carifta Games over the weekend. And although the Jamaicans dominated, there were some absolutely exhilarating performances from uh, some athletes from other countries. Um, but Hubert, um, you've been, I don't want to say covering the Carifta Games for more than 30 years, but you've been, <laughs> you've been following the Carifta Games yeah. for more than 30 years, for sure. Um, great for track and field fans that after a two-year break due to COVID-19, the Games finally back. How did this one grab you and, and the continuation of the, the dominance of the, the girls and boys from all across Jamaica? First of all, just good to have track and field back in Jamaica, in the National Stadium. And it had the feel of a reunion. Officials and fans and other people who would normally travel with the Curfew Games across the Caribbean were hugging each other, shaking hands like they were old friends, having not seen them for a long time. So it had the feel of a reu reunion. So Mike Sands, when he came in, he said that same very thing. And that's how it felt. Great to hear the band playing again, the John Connor band, and great to see the athletes out there. So first things first, the resumption of track and field, a symbolic opening up of the Caribbean after COVID-19. So very important. And on the track and in the field, excellence everywhere you looked. Yeah, the world record run by the girls, though, the 4x100 sprint relay under 20, as fabulous as it was, Hubert, we can't say that it was unexpected because given the quality of the four athletes that were lining up, it was pretty easy to predict that there was going to be a world record. How big the world record would have been would, would be a different story, but not surprising that we saw that world record. Surprising that you get it on April the 17th. <laughs> this is early in the season. That lineup has never run together before. You could see on the first exchange on screen earlier on, not quite so good on the first exchange between the first leg, Cole, Cole and Clayton. And Clayton. Yeah. The new member, Liston, blinking quick, um, great changes to receive and to give the baton. And this is Tia closing out. This is now 42.58. Think of that number in April. The World Junior Championships are in Cali, Colombia. 1971, Donald Quarry, 1908, it's high altitude. Who knows how fast they will go then? Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, let's get Leighton Levy in. Um, Leighton, uh, great to have you joining in the discussion here. 42.58, the Jamaican girls in the under 24 by 100. Um, is Leighton with us? I'm not, I'm not hearing him. I'm not, I'm not seeing him. I, I know he has on a Bayern Munich shirt. I'm not sure why he's wearing Bayern Munich when, <laughs> they, were, they were red. When, when his Liverpool team put a spanking on a team earlier on today. But um, uh, Leighton, the, the, the Jamaican dominance at the Carifta Games, as we have we've said, we've been seeing since 1985 until now. And uh, outside of some events when Jamaica were not able to dominate, um, the general trend 
of uh, Jamaican superiority in track and field among the teenagers uh, continuing to be in evidence here at the, at the Carifta Games. Your overall thoughts on how they acquitted themselves to this assignment? Um, they did quite well. And what was clear, Lance, um, is that during the break, the two-year break when, you know, very little activity was going on, there was a lot of work going on behind the scenes for the Jamaican athletes, and I might add the BVI as well, because what I expected from Bahamas, for example, with 55 or 55 member team, I thought they would have come with a stronger challenge. But four gold medals and a 17 overall, I think even they would have been disappointed with the performance of, of that team. But, but what we saw from the Jamaicans was a consistency, and what I think helped to, to generate that kind of dominance was the fact that chance was last week. A lot of these kids are at their first peak for the season. And I think despite tired legs and bodies, they would have come into these championships ready to run fast regardless because they're at peak. Of course, what they will do for the remainder of the season is, is of course, down to management. But it was a very impressive performance. Dominance in every sphere you can think of. And to think that it could have been more, given that Rashid Dwyer was um, uh, disqualified in the, in the 800 meter final for obstruction and the, the, the fall of Granville in the hurdles, it could have been 94 medals and, and of, the, of the 94, 47 gold. So you're looking at a very, very dominant performance that could have been even more dominant. Yeah, Leighton, and you know, you speak of the dominance and you know, uh, a lot of the other Caribbean athletes looking on and just our Caribbean viewers would wonder, why is there such a gap in the performances when it comes to Jamaica and the rest of the Caribbean? What would you attribute to that? A couple of things. I want the population size. Huh? Um, we have almost 3 million people, which means that we have a larger pool of people to, 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 to select the talent from. Also, I think our grassroots program here in Jamaica is the strongest in the region, notwithstanding what the Bahamas uh, does um, year in, year out. But I think our grassroots program is what gives us that distinct advantage year in, year out. When you look at the prep school champs, the primary school champs, champs itself, and the, the raft of central champs, all of the other dif different de development meets, you're not seeing that kind of level of, of, of competition in the smaller islands. For whatever the reasons are, I won't even begin to guess why. But I do suspect that they could do, across the region, they could do a better job of, of more development needs and a, a stronger grassroots program because we've, we've given them a blueprint of how it can actually work. And um, it's kind of surprising in some instances that it's not been adopted as completely as there is opportunity to do. Because when you look at, for example, I mentioned the Bahamas, but when you look at what the BVI has done, so just over 30,000 people, and their third in the standings, and the only reason why they probably haven't had more medals is because of the, the, the number, the, the size of the team that they had. And I think, um, you know, when you look at the realities of, of what they were, the island was devastated during the hurricanes in 2018. They're probably just recovering. When you look at their four by four um, female squad, especially, you will see that a lot of good work is, is going on behind the scenes. So those are a couple of the factors, I think, why Jamaica continues to dominate Maria, because I think, you know, the combination of population size and a better grassroots program and more development needs that give our athletes that competitive edge is what gives us that distinct advantage. Yeah, I know um, Hubert, he's with us. He wants to join in on the discussion. Yeah, two quick ones to add to your list, Leighton. One, um, the coaches, GC Foster College is here in Jamaica. There are more quality coaches at every level, high, primary, prep and college per square foot. And second of all, Jamaica worked with the government to bring track and field back early during the pandemic. Lots of the teams in the Caribbean have just come back this year. TNT, for example, just began to have gatherings and therefore meets outdoors a couple of months ago. And so Jamaica is not just stronger, better coached, um, bigger in size. Um, Bahamas is 400,000 people. That's seven times smaller than Jamaica. But it's also further along the curve of recovery from the pandemic and more work. champs came back last year. A lot of other countries are coming back this year. So Jamaica is ahead in the recovery athletically from COVID. Yeah, I think that's a very good point Hubert is making, Amara and, and Leighton, because the margin of Jamaica's dominance in this Carifta Games 2022 was significantly more than we had seen in the past. Oh, yes, yeah. they, yes, they top the medal tables before. every year, pretty much. But they have never won 92 medals before. 
and the team that finished second has never won so few medals it's against been, the Jamaicans. So the factor jam. of the it's factor been of a lot of the other countries. A lot land since yeah. 2012. That's the first year when the team size grows from 70 max yeah. to 80 max. Because of the population, let me point it out to you, Jamaica is the only country that can every year respond to that 80 team max. Yes. And so you've got more soldiers in the battle. And therefore, if let's suppose Barbados, 18 team members this year, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you win their medals. They're normally a 30 medal team, Barbados, yeah. um, Bahamas, a 30 medal team. Um, the top four, 30 medals, Trinidad and Tobago, 30. but now Jamaica is able to take some of these medals. And the new teams, Guyana and the BVI, are able to take up the medals that these teams are not ready to reclaim because they're not back up to speed. Yeah, and, and the fact is that because of the depth of talent with the Jamaican teams, there are a lot of years where athletes who don't make the Jamaica team, <laughs> If they made the team, they probably would have won medals. So yeah. there, are, there, are, there are high quality athletes, teenagers in Jamaica who don't make the Carifta team, who would probably make any other Carifta none, team. None greater than Karika Hill. Yeah. Exactly. World under 18 sprint hurdles record holder, 1271. Mm -hmm. She can't make the Jamaica team in under 20. Yes. She watches this thing on television. And she's the world leader at under 18, both 100 and 100 hurdles, yeah. isn't she? That's the depth with. From the, that, what the size gives you. Yeah. yeah like I was that. actually sitting. I was actually sitting next to her in the stands when the on the final day, and you literally saw her flinch while the hurdles racers were going on, knowing that she could have been there. And I said to her, "Listen, sometimes you have to take a step back to move forward." And she agreed. And and her mom was, you know, so very proud of her because I think she collected a, 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 an award for the world record that she set at champ that twelve that amazing twelve seventy one. But she's more determined than ever now. So, of course, you know, in the latest iteration of, of the character games next year, assuming that she's still here, you have to wonder that she will come back with a chip on her shoulder, which could make it uh, very, very difficult for those who are <laughs> Yeah, I, I wanted to talk quickly about the individual sprinters that, that call the eye for the most part. And the, the, the hottest name on the lips of, of track and field fans would be Tina Clayton yeah. and, and Brianna Liston, the 100 and 200 meter champions in the under 20 divisions. And there is a lot of feeling, Hubert, among the Jamaican sporting fraternity that these athletes have the potential to keep Jamaica's flag flying high at the highest level in the way that Merle Notti and Shelly Ann Fraser Price and Elaine Thompson Hira um, had been able to do uh, and, and still are doing. Um, do, do you agree that these two athletes, based on what you're seeing, uh, have the potential? And not to just them, right Lance, the, yeah. the generation. I think that we, we Jamaica now, yes. have enough quality to power medal winning performances as far as the 2028 Olympic Games, even mm -hmm. with no addition. When you look at Karika Hill, not on this team, equals Kevona Davis's class to record of 11.16. She's not yet 18. The Claytons are ahead of her. This are ahead of her in terms of age and development. Um, you have to think it's great. If, even if Shelly and Fraser Price retires at some point this year or some other year, Elaine Thompson is just 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> Sharika Jackson has just converted to the 100. Yeah. More shots to fire. Brianna Williams That's has just started to has just turned 20 in this month April. Yeah. This Brianna Liston that we're looking at who won the 200 so impressively, does she remind you of any of our past stars? Because she's I hear a, people... she, she's a combination of Elaine Thompson and Merlin Has yeah. that tall, slim frame, nice ease of movement, very upright. Um, she has Merlin's very calm demeanor in interviews. Yeah. And That's is, what I hear people saying. Is yeah. a, a good head on shoulders and has the range, 11-1-4, 22.53 into a headwind, 2.2, and release splits at 52.5. So she can put that speed anywhere across that spread that she wants to. And the point yeah, that and, you and, go ahead. Can I just add something quickly here? And as it relates to th that future generation, lads, think about this. At Champs uh, just over a week ago, we saw a race in which uh, Tina Clayton ran 11.22 and uh, 11.23 and 11.26 into a minus 2.8 win. That equates to, in, as in zero win, no win at all, 11 flat. And if they had had the win from Karika Hill's class to 11.16, that would have been somewhere between 10.92 and 10.95, 
at 17 years old. The Clayton Twins don't turn 18 until August. And, and Cole, Hill, and Cole, the whole relay team is 17. Well. Yeah, yeah, 17. So you're looking at immense talent because you factoring all of the improvements of, of, of equipment and training and nutrition and everything. These girls at this age are faster than Shelly and Fraser Price ever was. Veronica Campbell, because remember Veronica Campbell has a record at 11-1-3. She was, what, 18 when at the at year at Veer. These girls are ahead of or the current cup of grace huh, in terms of what their progression is. Yes. So you know, for, for them to, to make that leap to the to senior ranks, if they manage to do that, could actually end up being among some of our best female sprinters of all time. And the, it is the females that have been carrying Jamaica's um, sprinting prowess for more than, but since 1980 with Merlin Nati when she won that first, first Olympic medal in, in Moscow. Yeah. Okay, uh, Leighton, stick with us. We're going to continue in the next segment or um, recap of what happened at the Carifta Games. Uh, but we'll transfer the discussion now to the likes of Adeja Hodge and some of these outstanding Eastern Caribbean performers at the Carifta Games over the past weekend. Back in a moment. Stay with Sportsmax on YouTube and follow us on all social pages for updates, news and entertainment. <laughs> 